like to talk about the conversation, my conversation in three parts. First, I would like to start by focusing on what I see as South Africa's natural advantages. Sometimes we forget that we do have some significant advantages over other countries and that for us to be successful in a global competitive environment, we must use every tool we have available to us. Naturally, however, I'll also say something on the key constraints we experience in operating in the mining sector in South Africa as part of that conversation. Second, the mining industry is one of the foundations upon which South Africa can build its future. You wouldn't be surprised for me to promote that view. Um, but it can be, and in our view, it can be an engine in its own right, and it can help us develop skills and expertise that can be applied across a much broader range of businesses. In fact, Nicola asked me a question about our operating model at uh, Anglo-American, and, and I said that, in actual fact, we've stolen many ideas from Toyota, Ford, BMW, the petrochemical sector, in our developing our operating model, which is more a fa manufacturing approach in the mining industry, and, and our short experience, and Norman's uh, one of the first guys that's implemented in our operation, he's seen about a 30% improvement, why we believe learning from other industries is actually more important for our future because we're generally a pretty close shop, a small group. We learn from each other. We steal each other's good ideas. What we don't tend to do is steal from other industries or other thought leaders, and we think that's the place where we will get the best ideas, and that's another conversation as well. Third, the adoption of the National Development Plan must be something that brings policy, business and people together. It must work for business, it must work for the government and support its social commitments, and it must work for the people of South Africa. South Africa cannot build a sustainable future without touching these three or four key points. We all have a part to play, and as I said before, the future of South Africa is too important to be left to politicians alone to do the heavy lifting. We all have a role to play in encouraging dialogue across South Africa's many constituencies and we must understand how we, work together, we can work together to make a difference. So in terms of natural advantages, and I'll go through a quick list of stuff we see, and I'd always start with the mining industry. Lots of doom and gloom around at the moment. Uh, let's remind ourselves what we have in this wonderful country uh, in terms of endowment and the mad-made infrastructure that we've put in place. We have some of the world's greatest mining assets and minerals resources, according to estimates, worth two, between $2.5 and $3 trillion, although maybe not at today's prices. Might be somewhat lower than that, but it's still significant. We have a highly developed physical infrastructure of roads, airports and railways, including dedicated rail links and ports for the export of minerals and mobile communications. And we often underestimate or undersell the quality of the infrastructure that we do have in place. I think we share a frustration that we're not operating it as well as we could and that we could do a lot more and need to invest in the future consistent or if I like if I could say compared to many other jurisdictions we're still pretty well positioned in the game and we could do a lot better. Our position in Africa is the continent's most diversified and sophisticated economy the Nigerians might argue with first world financial services including a stock exchange that is 19th globally in terms of market cap. Now I would say for those that have visited Nigeria and South Africa would still rank South Africa well ahead in terms of our infrastructure and the skills that we have available to us and how we are generally managing our affairs in the country. We've got world-class universities and business schools. Our international reputation in the field of medicine is almost second to none. We are a first-class tourist destination if you can get a visa. I should apologise to Malusi for that one. That was a low blow. Our people who are eager to learn and upgrade their skills and who are increasingly entrepreneurial minded, very significant. By the way, the visa issue is a very big one. We as a company rely on Chinese, believe it or not, to actually sell diamonds or to buy diamonds. They have only two locations where they can personally front up and have their visa photos. So at the end of the day, most of them unable to get in the country to actually perform the work required to buy diamonds. So for us, it's a major issue. And we have to think about 
the consequences of our policy settings in those countries for doing business. And at the moment, we've made it almost impossible for the Chinese to come here and do business, which we absolutely rely on. So we do ask when policies are set that the unintended or the potential unintended consequences are considered. We are a shining beacon for African democracy with our parliamentary system of government, our constitution, independent judiciary, free press, and our vibrant public and private institution. Now, when I talk about free press, Alan, everything I say should be taken in context. And if I say something controversial, I hope you do balance it with something very positive that I said. That